Hey guys, Joshua here from Gander Flight. Today we're out in the shop and we're working on a vlogging handle for my camera on the cheap. Stick around and figure out how we do it. All right, so often most of my videos I shoot with a tripod. Project based, I can set the camera up, do my thing and go. Uh, sometimes when I go to conferences or workshops or things, I like to take the camera around with me and walk. Um, and sometimes that includes vlogging shots, you know, holding the camera out, getting me talking to the camera while moving and not having a tripod with me. Um, unfortunately, it's super awkward to hold the camera without any sort of grip. Um, ideally, something such as a Gorilla Pod or a Switch Pod that it would attach to the bottom of the camera and have a handle to be able to hold out would be perfect. However, uh, I'm not going to be spending that much money right now into video equipment. So I came over to the shop, I'm going to look around, see what I got here and what would be easily gotten at a hardware store that I could make a camera grip for to use in place of. Um, I'm not looking to replicate the tripod features of a Gorilla Pod or a Switch Pod, but mostly just the vlogging handle. So let's see what we can come up with. All right, I went searching through the parts bin and I've got some old PVC from another project. I'm thinking that I can put this together in a 90 degree configuration. And then drill hole through here and find a quarter a quarter 20 screw of the correct length to thread into the bottom of my camera but then attach it like this so that I can hold the PVC and it'll give me a good handle to hold that camera on the tricky part is going to be figuring out how to get this so that I can attach it somewhat quickly without any tools so I'm going to go look in my Bolt, nuts and bolts bins and see what we can come up with as far as options for that. All right, so I'm thinking that if I use either an I hook or a J hook bolt, not, uh, not screw, but bolt, the appropriate thread size, that then I can make this toolless and be able to use those to grip, to attach and unattach this handle, this grip from the camera. So let's see if we have any that are the correct thread size here. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, and is that gonna be long enough? Ooh, looks like it might be. All right, let's drill some holes through here and then see if we can come up with a good attachment solution here that doesn't allow all these parts to go flying when I take it off of the camera. So now we've got that all placed where I want to. Now let's uh, figure out how to keep this eye hook from falling out and give it a little bit of uh, back pressure so that it doesn't unthread as this is moving about. If I get this all set to where I want it, then I'll go back and add some PVC glue to these joints to make everything rock solid. But I want to figure this out first before we do any of that. So let's grab the nut bin and look for some nuts and washers. All right, so there we have it. We've got the eye hook into the PVC pipe into a nylon lock nut and then a second nylon lock nut and a split washer. And the idea being that once I turn this, it's gonna to attach to the camera, it's gonna turn in. Those lock nuts are never gonna move, but it's gonna compress that split washer, put some back tension on these threads to hold this contraption to the camera. And then when I unscrew it, it'll come out of the camera but then this hardware will never fall out of the PVC pipe. It'll always be in there. Let's see if it works. Hey, there we go. So I know, I know all of you are screaming at me, but it's gonna spin, it's gonna spin. Yes, it is gonna spin. We gotta figure that out. 
one problem at a time. All right, so the easiest thing I think is gonna be drilling a second hole in the spot where this keeper pin is and putting a stationary bolt into that spot. So we'll measure out the distance from here to there, drill another hole, and then find a bolt long enough to go through. So a bolt and a single nut and just clamp it down so it's always always stationary, always sticking there. So it'll thread under there, then this one will thread through, and that should keep the rotating to a minimum. Let's see if we can get that accomplished. All right, so I found another bolt that is long enough to go through the PVC pipe and will just fit inside that keeper hole. So let's go ahead and get that drilled out, find a nut, and mount it through. So it's definitely gonna work, but there's a little too much play in there for my preference. So I'm gonna see if I can find a larger diameter bolt here, something that fits almost perfectly inside that little keeper hole. Hey, I wanna interrupt and take a quick moment to say if you're into DIY, which I think you are because you're watching this video, I invite you to come check out our DIY group over on Facebook, DIYers, Tinkers, Fixers, and Makers. I'll put a link in the description box below. Enjoy the build. All right, so after several renditions, I changed some things and I think I got it closer. Um, what I did is I took those lock nuts out. Uh, they weren't staying in place. And so I took the eye bolt and I did a washer, split washer, washer, and then into one lock nut to keep it from falling out when it's not in use. And I think this is definitely on the right track. Uh, it'll totally work as is. Putting that in and screw it on. That, that split washer gives it a little bit of spring to keep it tight. Um, the only thing that I'm not loving so far is that the bolt I used for in the, the pin position is a little bit narrow so it allows it to move back and forth just a little bit. And what I'm thinking is, I tried the next size up in bolts, which would be quarter 20, just like the threaded portion here, except that the quarter 20 bolts um, don't exactly fit. I'm thinking I might take a portion that's as deep as that little nub and uh, grab a file and just file off the threads so that it's smooth, because that'll definitely give it enough clearance to get in and out. Um, it's basically the same size, they just tap this one with threads and this one not. So I'm gonna give that a try and see if it gets it even tighter. Uh, I probably don't even have to take off all the threads, just a, one or two passes around the whole thing, um, and then use a cord, so I can use the same bolt size for both of them, um, which would be easy for anyone who's gonna do this later, who's watching this video and wants to do it, uh, going to the, the hardware store and getting two of the same same size, because uh, then you can buy two of the same lock washers, and if they come in a bag pack, that'll be easier to do than um, buying them singly. So let's give that a try. All right, so I'm gonna file down the end here to make it smooth, get rid of some of that material so it fits smoothly in the, that um, placement knob. But what, I'm gonna stick a nut on here first so that when I take that material off, um, I'm gonna need to put a lock nut in there um, to keep it inside of the PVC. So I'm gonna want those threads to be usable. So I put the nut on first, then I'm gonna take the material off, and then I'll unthread this knot, and it will make those threads um, in the transition point between smooth and threaded usable so that when I put the lock nut on, I'm not fighting trying to re-thread anything. Just a little tip, save yourself some time and frustration for sure. All right, so I think that was the ticket. Uh, grinding down the quarter inch threads so that they fit smoothly and cleanly into that keeper pin. And then this will just lock into place. And now I move it and there's just an infinitesimal amount of move. I think what I did is I used quarter inch drill bits and what I need to do is go down a size to 1564 so that when these bolts go through these holes, it's tight. 
Uh, right now they fit uh, because uh, you know a quarter inch holes they fit, but it's just the tolerance is not quite there. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is re-drill these holes. I have another piece of scrap PVC um, and see if that makes a difference. And in, and if it does, then obviously I'll recommend you guys that you use a uh, 1564 bit instead of a quarter inch bit to drill these holes. Because if that takes out that last little bit of play from there, because I think it's what happened is just the, the bolts are moving in those holes, then um, this thing will be this thing will be rock solid if I can get that um, and then attach the handle. Totally usable as is. Totally usable. I think I'm just going to go the, the extra mile and see if it makes a difference using the slightly smaller holes. Let's give it a dry fit. Boom. No movement. I need to square that up when I glue it. Make sure it's straight because that would be pretty bad if I had it askewed. I think. Yeah, that's not moving. All right, so 730 seconds is the whole size, and the whole size shall be 730 seconds. All right, so I got it all apart. I decided instead of using these end caps, which just adds expense and weight. Um, I wanted to make it look a little nicer than just you know straight 90 degree PVC cuts. So I took it over to my miter saw and cut 45 degrees. I think it just adds a little bit of flair to it. Makes it look not so, not so much like PVC, I guess. Um, but I'll go ahead and, and get these all sanded up and then I'm gonna glue it together and then we'll paint it and put the hardware back in. And then uh, I'll come back and show you how it's working out for me. Let's get this mess cleaned up and move on. And now if you didn't want to glue these together, you could always drill small holes and just put screws in there or bolt through. Uh, I think glue is probably the best option but you could definitely try it the other way. A bolt all the way through would be stronger than a screw, but a screw from each side might also hold. It all depends on what kind of risk you want to take with your camera and your equipment. I think uh, a few dollars for PVC cement is definitely the way to go. All right, so we're back. We've got uh, everything all painted up. I went ahead and Painted a few coats of black, put some clear coat on here to give it some protection, longevity. Now all we gotta do is reinstall all the hardware, stick it on the camera, and then give it a try. See how it works. There we go. So we've got a quarter 20 bolt here that we took some threads off so it would fit well and easily into the keeper hole. And now we got the quarter 20 eye bolt for thumb grips with a flat washer, a split washer, a flat washer. And then inside both are nylon, let's see if you can see that, nylon lock nuts. The nylon lock nut on this guy is all the way down to keep it tight. And the nylon lock nut on the, the eye screw is uh, set so that I can't back it all the way out and fall out of that hole. Let's mount it up and see how it works as a vlogging stick.
doesn't move at all. Seems super solid. And I can still get the battery off to change batteries without having to take anything off, so that was important. Nice, let's go and try it. Here we go. Vlogging, the PVC vlogging stick. So I think it works. It's gonna work pretty well. It allows me to hold my hand at a comfortable angle and puts the camera far enough out that I get from here to here in, in, in screen. I think it's gonna work out well. Definitely a great value for the amount of time and money I put into it. Well, there you got it, guys. My homemade camera grip. I think it's going to work great for the few times that I need to do uh, vlogging style videos. Um, parts and pieces all came in at under $8 at my local hardware store, including the PVC and then all the hardware. So uh, definitely a, a great budget option if you need to have a, a camera mount. Cool thing is that I can take it off and I can use it on this camera or I can use it on the mount that I have my phone on, which I'm recording on right now. And uh, yeah, I think uh, it's going to be a, a cool piece of gear to have and for less than $8 in all reality it cost me nothing because these are all extra parts that I had laying around. Um, it's a great repurposing of materials and I think even if you were to go out and buy these with the intention of making this, it'd still be a great value for what it is. Um, I think you could totally put a bigger camera on here. I mean this is not going anywhere, it's rock solid. Um, and I think it's, it's going to be, it's going to work out great. I'll uh, use it a few times and We'll see how it goes. So if you enjoyed this build video, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Click that bell for notifications. And let me know, would you spend uh, the $8 and some time to build a camera mount like this, or would you just go buy a purpose-made uh, gorilla pod or switch pod? I'd really like to know. Let me know in the comments below which, uh, which, would, which you would do if you were only using it on occasion. I think if you're a full-time vlogger, you're probably not even watching this video. But uh, for the occasional vlogging shot, I think this is going to work great, and I can't, uh, can't wait to get out and use it. Until next time, take care and pay it forward.